Greetings. I have been studying neuro-linguistic programming and general semantics as a way to help myself communicate my thoughts and ideas better. In neuro-linguistic programming for dummies, there is an interesting part that says if you use abstract nouns, it's not going to translate well and people aren't going to respond well. Now, I've looked at my writing and my speaking and I see I use a lot of abstract nouns like intellectual stimulation, self-actualization that mean a lot to me, but people don't necessarily respond very well to that. So neuro-linguistic programming for dummies says to use a wheelbarrow test, which is simply if you can put a noun in a wheelbarrow, if you can picture it there, then it's something people respond to. But if it's too abstract to be put in a wheelbarrow, then it is troublesome and you perhaps should rethink it. For example, self-actualization. How can you picture that in a wheelbarrow? You could, however, picture a toy in a wheelbarrow. So in order to get to the next level, I have to ask myself, how do I change these abstract nouns into things people can understand? What I found recently at one website, www.rl.rjnlndmodel.nl, is a ladder of abstraction from S.I. Hayakawa's a general semanticist. Now, I probably mispronounced his name. And I forgive, please forgive me if I did that. But let's take a look at his ladder of abstraction and his explanation. Okay, he's talking about a cow. At the top level is wealth. He says it's extremely high level of abstraction omitting almost all reference to the characteristics of Bessie, the cow. Level 7, he says, is still more of her characteristics are left out. Level six is farm assets. Reference is only made to what she has in common with all saleable items on the farm. Level five is livestock. Characteristics in common with pigs, chicken, goats, etc. are referred to. Four is cow. Characteristics abstracted to cow one, cow two, cow three. Characteristics peculiar to specific cows are left out. Three, Bessie. Name we give to object of perception. Of level two, name does not equal object. Name stands for object and omits reference to many characteristics. Two, cow is not the word, but object of experience, which our nervous system abstracts, selects from the totality that constitutes the process cow. Many characteristics are left out. Number one level is process. Cow known to science. Atoms according to characteristics infinite, the process level all from S.I. Hayakawa's Ladder of Abstraction. Now let's apply this to a specific example. Of course, one of my favorite examples, Westboro Baptist Church. Now this may not be the perfect way to use a ladder of abstraction, and it may not fit 100% perfectly to the way S.I. Hayakawa divided the categories, but I believe it's a good way to look at the abstracting process from a very abstract thing to a very specific thing. Ladder of Abstraction Westboro members. Now, I believe one of the biggest under misunderstandings people have of Westboro Baptist Church is the fact that they don't go to the deepest level possible. We can have it at eight, religionists. Now, some people criticize Westboro Baptist Church because they're against religion, but generally this is not the main criticism. Then we have level seven, Christian. If you have a Westboro Ma Baptist Church member, they are Christian. Some people are against Christianity, so they're against Westboro Baptist Church. For example, in the video, what atheists don't do, they have one example from Westboro Baptist Church, pick at your funeral. These people are against Christianity in general, and Westboro Baptist Church to them is just a very egregious example of Christianity. You can divide Christianity further in Protestant or Catholic, and Westboro Baptist Church falls under the Protestant category. All members of Westboro Baptist Church are Protestants. They don't like Catholic Church. They pick at Catholic Church. More specifically, and this is about as far as people generally get, is Westboro Baptist Church are Calvinists. Most people just see them as fundamentalists, so they go no further than level six. Now it is, to me, clear that they are different than other fundamentalists. Some would say they're more extreme. Indeed, that may be the case, but it's also the case that they're an entirely different breed of fundamentalist. They are a Calvinist as opposed to other Protestants who are not Calvinist. Now, we have it for the Westboro member. There's very specific characteristics of Westboro Baptist Church that separates them from other Calvinists. 
and then we have specific examples of members. A lot of people just group them all together and they don't see any differences, but those who look see differences. There are different personalities, different approaches, different ideas, different thoughts. For example, we have Sarah Phelps. Sarah Phelps is not the same as Megan Phelps Roper. She is not the same as Rebecca Phelps Roper, Shirley Phelps Roper, Fred Phelps Jr., Timothy Phelps, or anyone else. They all have different characteristics, different talents, different ideas. Now, two, we have the level of the name Sarah Phelps. If I say the word Sarah Phelps, that's not actually Sarah Phelps itself. It's just the way I call her. Maybe she has a nickname that other people refer to her as in the church. And I think it's very important to go to the bottom. Now, at the process of Sarah Phelps, is probably not too relevant for our purposes because unless we realize that she has guts and glands and atoms and molecules just like the rest of us, and so she's human like the rest of us, so we can relate to her. I believe it's best to go as far as possible down and realize you can see as many interesting things. The further you go down, the more specific you are, the more you're willing to withhold judgment and look into Westboro Baptist Church. You can learn a lot.